The Bureau of Industry and Security presents Deemed Exports. The introduction scene says, Deemed Exports, U.S. Department of Commerce, Bureau of Industry and Security. Five individuals standing on a globe appear on the screen. The next scene shows a hiring manager in the United States on the phone with an engineer located in Japan. A text bubble appears for the hiring manager that says, Congratulations! We would like to hire you to work at our company in the United States. A text bubble appears for the engineer that says, That is great news! The scene transitions to the export compliance office of the U.S. company. The hiring manager walks in to meet the export compliance officer. We finally hired an engineer, and he's from Japan. That's great news. Will we need to apply for a deemed export license for the new hire? What is a deemed export license? A deemed export license is an authorization from the Department of Commerce to release technology or source code subject to the Export Administration regulations to a foreign person in the United States. The release is deemed to be an export to the individual's most recently obtained citizenship or permanent residence. Two text boxes appear on the screen. The first one says, the Export Administration Regulations, EAR, defines technology as information necessary for the development, production, use, operation, installation, maintenance, repair, overhaul, or refurbishing, or other terms specified in the Export Control Classification Numbers, ECCNs, on the Commerce Control List that control technology of an item. The second text box says, in the EAR, the term foreign person encompasses a natural person who is not a lawful permanent resident of the United States, citizen of the United States, or any protected individual as defined by 8 U.S.C. 1324B A3. In addition, foreign person is synonymous with foreign national as used in the EAR and the International Traffic in Arms Regulations, 22 CFR 120.16. How do I figure that out? Sounds like I should set up a deemed export training session. The scene transitions to an open office setting with employees working at their desks. Everyone receives an email notification of an export control training session. The email message appears on the screen and says, join us for deemed export training. Date, August 16th, time 2 p.m. location training conference room. The scene then transitions to the training conference room where the deemed export training is taking place. The company export compliance officer is providing the training. Thank you for joining this training session. Today, we are going to discuss the deemed export provision in part 734 of the Export Administration Regulations, or EAR for short. Similar to how a license might be required to export items from the United States to a foreign country, a license might be required to release technology or source code to a foreign person in the United States. The scene transitions to a clean room manufacturing facility with two employees working with chemicals. One employee asks the other, can you train me on how to develop these chemicals? The other employee responds, we might need to apply for a deemed export license before I can release a development technology to you. A text box appears that says, deemed export, releasing or otherwise transferring technology or source code, but not object code, to a foreign person in the United States. A release may occur through visual inspection, verbal exchange, or the review of technical data, plans, or blueprints. Bear in mind that a foreign person's simple operation or use of an item subject to the EAR is not necessarily a release of technology. The scene then transitions to whiteboard. The word release appears on the screen and the following images appear on the whiteboard as examples of releases of technology. A person looking through a telescope, two people having a conversation, and another person reading a file. Those images disappear and an image of a person operating heavy machinery appears on the screen with a red slash on it to indicate that it is not an example of a release of technology. The image disappears and the words foreign person appear on the whiteboard and the narrator's dialogue appears on the whiteboard. A foreign person is defined in part 772 of the EAR. The term encompasses a natural person who is not a lawful permanent resident of the United States, citizen of the United States, or any other protected individual. In addition, 
foreign person is synonymous with foreign national as used in the EAR and foreign person as used in the International Traffic and Arms Regulations. The scene transitions back to the clean room manufacturing facility with the two employees. A release of technology or source code is considered an export of that item to a foreign person's most recently acquired country of citizenship or permanent residency. Releasing technology or source code to that individual in the United States would be deemed an export to that foreign country for which authorization from BIS might be required. There may be situations in which a foreign person possesses more than one citizenship or country of permanent residence. A text bubble appears for one of the employees that says, I was born in the Netherlands, and the Netherlands flag appears on the screen. Another text box appears for the same employee that says, but I later became a citizen of South Africa, and the flag for South Africa appears on the screen. The employee determines that South Africa is her most recently acquired country of citizenship. In such situations, BIS will base the license requirements on his or her most recently acquired country of citizenship or permanent residency. For example, suppose you are designing an optical mirror and would like to hire an engineer from Japan to join your U.S. development team. You must confirm the individual's immigration status, that is, confirm his citizenship and or any permanent residencies he or she might possess. The scene shows the U.S. hiring manager and the engineer from Japan talking on the phone. A text bubble appears for the U.S. hiring manager that says, I will send you the forms that you need to fill out. Please return them to me as soon as possible. Thank you. A text bubble appears for the engineer that says, Will do. Thank you. The scene then transitions to the whiteboard. A Japanese passport and personnel paperwork appear on the screen with a hand stamping approved. If the engineer's most recent country of citizenship or permanent residency is Japan, the release of the design technology in the U.S. to the engineer would be deemed an export to Japan. Not all releases of technology or source code require authorization from BIS. Depending on the item at issue and the country of most recent citizenship or permanent residence, the export may qualify for a license exception or be eligible for no license required or NLR treatment. The following images appear on the screen. An approved BIS export license, Part 740 License Exceptions excerpt from the EAR and an orange circle with the words No License Required NLR inside the circle. Then a screenshot of the BIS website online training room appears on the screen. I recommend watching Export Controls, a quick start guide available in the BIS online training room for more information on licenses, license exceptions, and the NLR designation. The Commerce Control List entry for ECCN 6A004 appears on the screen. Let's take a closer look at the optical mirror example. Certain optical mirrors are controlled on the Commerce Control List under Export Control Classification Number ECCN 6A004. For this example, let's assume the optical mirrors are controlled under ECCN 6A004.A. Therefore, the development technology for these optical mirrors is controlled under ECCN 6E001. The Commerce Control List entry for ECCN 6E001 appears on the screen. Now let's figure out the reasons for control. The development technology is controlled for National Security Column 1 reasons and Anti-Terrorism Column 1 reasons. Is there a license requirement to release the development technology to Japan? The Commerce Country Chart appears on the screen. Cross-reference the row for Japan with the columns of the applicable reasons for control. In this case, National Security Column 1 and Anti-Terrorism Column 1. Let's take a look at the Commerce Country Chart. Since there is an X in the box under the National Security Column 1 reasons for Japan, you will need to apply for a license and receive an approval unless a license exception is available prior to the release of the technology to the engineer whose most recent country of citizenship or permanent residence is Japan. A screenshot of the SNAP-R web portal appears on the screen followed by a screenshot of the BIS online training room highlighting the SNAP-R videos. Deemed export license applications are submitted online using the Simplified Network Application Process Redesign SNAP-R web portal. 
BIS has training videos available on the BIS online training room for step-by-step -step instructions to use SnapR. A whiteboard appears on the screen that says Deemed Export License Application Support Documents, and the items that the narrator mentions appear on the whiteboard. Deemed Export License Applications require additional supporting documents, such as a letter of explanation, complete job description, foreign person's resume including particular qualifications, a technology control plan, and proof of eligibility to work in the United States. Similar to conventional exports, deemed export license applications are subject to an interagency review process. Once the deemed export is authorized, either under a license, a license exception, or in situations where the item may be exported on a no license required basis, release of the technology or software source code may occur. The scene transitions to the U.S. company's Export Compliance Office, with the Export Compliance Officer and Hiring Manager in the room. A text bubble appears for the Export Compliance Officer that says, The deemed export license was approved. A text bubble appears for the Hiring Manager that says, Great! Now we can release the optical mirror technology to the new hire. The scene then transitions to the whiteboard and Section 734.14 of the EAR appears on the screen. There are deemed re-exports too. Section 734.14 of the EAR defines a deemed re-export as the release in a foreign country of technology or source code subject to the EAR to a foreign person of another country. For example, if U.S. origin technology is exported to France and a national from India will be hired to work at the French facility, then the French company might need to apply for a deemed re-export license to release the technology to the Indian national. The same license review process occurs, including the determination of the individual's most recently obtained citizenship or permanent residency. The scene changes to a map of the world and the United States, France, and India are highlighted. A file that says U.S. origin technology appears by the United States and moves to France. An individual appears by India and walks to France. A text bubble appears for the individual that says, I am a citizen of India, I am not a dual citizen, and I am not a permanent resident of another country. The Indian flag appears next to the individual. The scene then transitions to a whiteboard that says, Deemed Exports. The narrator's dialogue appears on the whiteboard. Here are a few points about deemed exports. The deemed export and deemed re-export provisions are described in Part 734 of the EAR. A screenshot of the BIS webpage appears on the screen. A mouse appears and navigates through the BIS website as described by the narrator. To get to Part 734, navigate to the BIS website at bis.doc.gov. Hover the mouse over Regulations from the blue menu bar and select Export Administration Regulations. On the next page, scroll down and click on Part 734, Scope of the Export Administration Regulations. Additional information on deemed exports is available under the Policy Guidance tab of the BIS website. The scene changes back to the whiteboard and the narrator's dialogue appears on the whiteboard. Deemed exports do not apply to U.S. citizens, lawful permanent residents, or other protected individuals. And the State Department, Directorate of Defense Trade Controls, also regulates releases of technology subject to the International Traffic and Arms Regulations to foreign persons in the United States and abroad. Please consult DDTC's website at www.pmddtc.state.gov for additional information. As always, the Bureau of Industry and Security's Office of Exporter Services is here to help. Please feel free to contact us if you have any further questions. Thank you for watching this video and happy exporting! The last scene says U.S. Department of Commerce, Bureau of Industry and Security, with website www.bis.doc.gov. The following numbers are on the screen. Washington, D.C. 202 482-4811, Irvine, California, 949-660-0144, and Enforcement Hotline, 1-800-424-2980.